I am so excited to be here with Padavi Vanadalak. She's an immigration attorney. Hi, everyone. She has been instrumental in helping change the lives of so many international students in terms of helping them process their next steps as far as staying in the United States yes. and working. Yes. Thank you for being here, Patty. Thanks for inviting me. I love it, Stuart. You're so welcome. I'm so honored. So one of the questions we wanted to address, and it's timely, because we are here coming up against a graduation date Correct. for many people. Yep. And so a lot of international talent is finding themselves in their hands. They have an EAD card. Yes. The Employment Authorization Card. Correct. But they have no job. Okay. They have nowhere to deploy <laughs> their talent. So what advice from an international uh, career coach and then also from a, an immigration attorney might we offer to people in yeah. terms of how to make use of the OPT? Right. Right. Well, I would say if you have your OPT and you don't have a placement yet, you got to hustle. Hustle, 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 because you do have to know that you only have a certain number of um, days that you can be unemployed during OPT, okay. um, and then you'll kind of be out of status. So okay. definitely, if you are if you are earlier in your planning, um, that's ideal. I mean, you need to start planning your your professional progression as early as possible. I mean, really, day one of your student or of your studies. Um, so you really have to hustle. But I haven't. So that's 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 the issue here. Is I, I've been just trying to graduate, okay. my head down. You've been studying. I've been working hard, studying, making my parents proud. But You're there's more. Slacking on the job. Okay. Yes. Job search. So I have right. just because it's painful. Maybe because for various reasons, maybe I didn't feel at the time that I was a strong enough talent, right? or I just wasn't consistent. Sometimes I would burst out resumes, and but then he'd not hear back, and now here I am with, I think you have under OPT, you have three months or 90 days mm -hmm. to look, right. and then you're going right. back to your original place of residence, or if you're a STEM OPT, mm -hmm talent, you've graduated, and you have up to how long to be looking if it's STEM OPT? Is it just also 90 days? I think you get up to 120, but that's cumulative. So that also includes any days of unemployment under regular OPT. I see. Okay. So so what do I do? Like, how do I bootstrap? How do I catch up in my job search? And I'm not asking you as an immigration attorney to right. have all the answers, right. but you have this wonderful perspective and knowledge. and and now it's the time, I've got three months. As a career coach, of course, I have my mm -hmm. suggestions. Yes. And to in, have, have you in conversation about this is, I think could help a lot of people. So maybe we're gonna be saying the same thing, but, yeah. but still not because you're an attorney and I'm not, so. I would say, for most of you, you probably know what you're supposed to do. It's like exercising. You know what you need to do. You just got to do it. So part of it is, you know, any advice you've gotten from your career counseling, um, you know, offices on campus. Part of it is you can get some real gems of, of information from seasoned professionals like Stuart, things you're not going to learn from um, the career services office on your campus. But it's the basics. It's just like exercising. You got to send out your, you got to polish your resume. You've got to polish your cover letter. You've got to send them, and you've got to send them over and over and over again. You've got to get yourself out there. You've got to meet employers. You've got to mm. do your networking. Um, right. So, so it's the basics. I mean, you know a lot of more about the nuances than I do, but um, you know, one, it starts there, and and two, I'm a big fan of of informational um, interviewing mm -hmm. um, as a way of networking. Um, and, and practicing some of those soft skills so that you get better at doing it time and time again because it's hard searching for a job. Patty, thank you. Let's wrap this up. You know, one of the ways that I like to think about this is as Michael Porter, the famous professor, has explained about competitive advantage, so a famous strategy professor, competitive advantage is the layering of individual yes. abilities and when together okay. provides that competitive advantage that allows a company to win in the marketplace. Right. And so, you know, the way I hear Patty, one way I hear Patty talking about it is develop a competitive advantage. Have the resume, make yes. it great, yes. but don't stop there. Yeah. Layer that with informational interviews. Layer that with yes. a work ethic, yes. which encourages, you know, following up, 
just like the exercising. I think that was a wonderful analogy to exercise. It really is like that. Yeah, you gotta do it. You just, you have to do something related to your, your, to your job every day. Not just on weekends, not just when you feel like it, because it's a numbers game, Stuart. The mm. more, I mean, you, you have to send out at least a hundred resumes to get two or three callbacks, you know, or you may send out a hundred resumes just to get 10 people to respond to an email and then only two or three of those are going to come in to, you know, result in a, hey, I want to meet you for coffee, come in for an interview even. Right. So that's, that's just what it takes. If you sent out 10 resumes and think that's it, that's not nearly enough. You just have to keep getting yourself out there. But I will say for international students, I know that it's hard because the American system of, of searching for a job may be very different from how you get jobs in your, your home countries. And, and Americans are much more, they expect you as the, the person searching for a job to be much more proactive, assertive, aggressive, and being an Asian woman, I know that that is not, those are not the traits that, you know, most Asian women are, are you know, culturally trained to be. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have to work 10 times harder than any of your, your American counterparts. And so, you know, part of it is, it's the numbers game and you've got to be sending out 100, 500 resumes just to get a couple of people to call you back. And that's just the reality. Um, the second part of it is, even if you are nervous about your um, interviewing skills or you are nervous about your language skills, it's practice. So again, the numbers, it's still a numbers game. So, you know, chances are you're going to send out your resume and, and you're going to get a call back by someone and you're gonna have either a, a coffee, you know, little get together or you're gonna have an interview that just flops and it's gonna be terrible and you're gonna stumble on all of your words. You're not gonna like click with whoever your interviewer is. Right. It happens, right. get I mean, over just, it. Just think about two, two Americans, skin. right? Two Americans meeting each other right. or two, nationals from another country meeting each other it's not always a perfect match right why should it be but it's for... practice for you it's practice for you mm. to practice your spiel your response the questions that the interviewer asks mm -hmm. you it's an opportunity for you to practice it um and so it's never a lost yeah. opportunity it's never going to feel good yeah, but that's, you yeah. gotta you gotta do it i mean that's that's the way i like to think about my career coaching is because you know as an american executive now serving as a career coach I have I teach from experience, right. having had some lucky breaks, but also tons of mistakes and errors, and, and hard more, knocks. more about the mistakes and errors, <laughs> right, the, and falling right. down, and than, no one talks than, about those than but, the lucky breaks, right. and and so I think of an effective coaching experience. If you're thinking about coaching, as not just how do I get the offer, right. because generally what happens is here's the offer. And here somewhere is your level of professionalism. Right. And what's going to happen is, as time passes, you're going to be able to get the offer that matches your level of professionalism. Right. And so if your target is the Google, the Goldman Sachs, or right. the MVP, then we're talking about a trajectory that needs to look like this right. to get there. Right. And if you're saying, hey, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm planning to be here, or I, I might right. end up here, right. if I'm not careful, if I'm not practicing, right. I might end up here and right. then fall short and then be available for offers which are not what you want. They don't right. meet your specialty. Right. They don't give you the training and respect that you're hoping right. to achieve. Right. And I understand, having been a graduate, I, I mean, I'm shooting for the moon. I want the best, Absolutely. you know, and you should too. And so where I think coaching can be the most impactful, it is that transformation of getting the offer, mm -hmm. but it's also on that path where all the magic happens. And right. that magic happens through the practice. Right. Through the practice of getting out there and realizing, wow, there are numbers involved here. It's not, yes. you know, you know, just shoot, shoot and score every time, right? right. Wayne Gretzky says, hey, you know, okay, so, okay, I'm a hockey guy, I love hockey. Wayne Gretzky's talking about, maybe we'll edit this out, maybe we won't. <laughs> but Wayne Gretzky says, <laughs> you know, you only score if you take a shot on goal. Yeah. And so me being a hockey fan, I think about ice hockey, but you have to shoot to score. Right. And so that shooting process and that practice process involves often missing. Right. But every right. time it's a rich experience. Absolutely. And all of the skills that you practice and, and get better at through the career 
process and the, the job search process, you're going to use in your career, frankly. I mean, right. no matter what this business you work, to, you work for, your business is always marketing for prospective customers or clients. Um, you're going to have to convince someone in your department or in your company to you know, recognize the work you've done and, and, you know, that you deserve the promotion. I mean, you're always going to have to use those skills. So, you know, this is a great place to practice the skills you will use in your career anyway.